Joy, I salute the should. We began a 1957 season in Knoxville, Tennessee. It was our first game of the season. We had a lot of inexperienced players in the line. Our first game in the rain. This was an emotional type game for us because of the inexperience. We went on to beat Tennessee seven to nothing in Knoxville. Throughout the year, we were able to score a lot of points. We scored approximately 200 points to our opponents 28. We were capable of scoring points, but we felt like throughout the year that our defense was what, what held us together. We had some big games in Houston, uh, Florida State, Chattanooga, and of course, coming down to the end of the year, we had Alabama. Coach Jordan was the kind of individual that did not put pressure on you throughout the year, saying you've got to win this game to win a national championship. Through half of the year, we was not concerned or was unaware of the national championship, really. But as the last half of the season began, we started making our moves in the poll. And as we went into the last game, Coach Jordan never puts pressure on you. At the beginning of the game, he, he would say something like, boys, if you play a good game, you got a chance to win the national championship. And this is the kind of person Coach Jordan is. Coach, in only seven years under your leadership, Auburn had become the best team in the country, and that winning tradition has kept up through the years. But perhaps the best remembered years are those that the fans like to remember as the Sullivan Beasley years. In the three years that these players were on the varsity, Auburn won 26 games, appeared in three bowls, and were twice ranked at the top 10 of the nation. You're so all right, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> and on Thanksgiving night in 1971, Pat Sullivan won the Heisman Trophy as the best college football player in the country. What can you say about Coach Jordan? When I was called, I asked to come down and kind of ad lib and talk about him and what he's meant to me and what he's meant to Auburn football. It's really kind of a tough thing. I was thinking about it on the way and you know, I've won several awards while playing athletics, the Heisman Trophy and several others. And I've said it many times in the past that one of the biggest things that's ever happened to me was being able to go to Auburn and have the, the friendships that I made with my teammates while there and having the opportunity to play under Coach Jordan. It was a tremendous thing and I'm very thankful for it. You know, Coach Jordan, when we were playing ball at school, was always known as the man. And what a higher compliment can a person have than to be known as the man by his, his players. To me, that was the, the greatest thing about going to Auburn was being associated with him and, and my teammates. And I'm very thankful for that to this day. Coach, when Pat and Terry graduated, people didn't expect too much from the next Auburn team. But you surprised them. In fact, Coach Jordan, by the time the Auburn team met Alabama at Legion Field in the final game of the regular season, the Tigers were 8-1, and one, ranked in the top five in the nation. But Auburn was still a 16-point underdog. Sure, we were disappointed to be underdog 16 points going to the Alabama game after the season we had. Uh, but when, we, when Coach Davis called a punt play, uh, we realized in the, in the huddle that something was going to happen. The stadium was filled with excitement and tense, tenseness. And as I lined up and broke through the line, I noticed the up back had taken burnage. And uh, the way was open for me to just block the punt. In about three minutes, we had an instant replay. My responsibility on the punt play was to rush from the outside and block the punt. In the end, crashed me out on the outside, and so I was completely behind the punter and out of the play when Bill blocked the ball. And the ball bounced up, and the referee threw the flag, and I went ahead and picked the ball up since it was right in my hands and went across the goal line. And of course, the whistle blew, and there was some confusion. We really didn't know whether it was a touchdown or what the situation was, but it did turn out that it was a touchdown. And on the second punt, same thing happened primarily. I was pushed out by the end again and went behind the, 
went behind the punter and Bill blocked the ball again and I picked it up. But this time I really realized that Bill had done a good job and that we were going to have a chance to win the ball game. David, uh, I think a big thing to start of the season that you remember when we had a team meeting and Coach Jordan told us in that meeting that he would be proud to take this team to play anybody at any time. And with a man with that much confidence in you, uh, how could you lay him down? Well, Bill, I realized that uh, going into that year, we didn't have anybody on the team that, well, even the fans felt like that it was going to be a rebuilding year and everything like that. And we just uh, had a lot of people that wanted to play football and wanted to do a lot of things for Coach Durden. And I think everybody was just proud of everybody on the team. And we didn't have any standouts like Pat and Terry. And everybody knew that we had to be a team that year to make a good season out of it. 1972 was a great season, Coach Jordan. You finished by demolishing that good Colorado team down in the Gator Bowl. And then, Coach, you won the National Bonehead of the Year Award for doing such a good job when you weren't supposed to. The Bonehead Award certainly isn't the only award you won during your career, Coach. Coach Jordan, the honors which have been won by you and by the players that you have coached are entirely too numerous to mention in a short period of time. You've been named Southeastern Conference Coach of the Year and National Coach of the Year. You've had 22 football players who have been named to the All-American team. Only two coaches in the history of the Southeastern Conference have produced more winning games than you have produced. You have been named to the Alabama Hall of Sports Fame and to the Alabama Academy of Honor. And next year, you will become a member of the Board of Trustees of Auburn University, which is probably the first time that a football coach has gone on the board of his alma mater and the institution in which he coached. But perhaps most important of all, on a day in October 1973, you became the first active football coach to have a stadium named for him. On the, that time, we dedicated Jordan Hare Stadium, changing the name from Cliff Hare Stadium. And it was a great privilege to do you honor on that occasion. As chairman of the Board of Trustees of Auburn University and as governor of Alabama, it is my pleasure to announce that henceforth this stadium shall be known as the Jordan Hare Stadium. So as governor, I speak for all of those present here today in Alabama, and we wish you many more active years of service to this great university and to the young people who attend it. So we love you, Shug. God bless you and War Eagle. Oh, I'm very proud today. I'm ex highly honored today. I'm deeply grateful and appreciative today. How to get a college president and a governor and a head football coach president with 10 minutes of time allotted is an impossible situation. But I do want to tell you that there are so many people that down through the years have meant so much to me and are responsible for me standing here today. I'm grateful. I thank my family. And I want to say this. I knew Fessler Hare. I used to have to take my eligibility flag over for his signature. I love the man as his family did. Uh, I wish he was here today. But I spent many afternoon talking with him. So I want you to know that the Jordan part of the stadium is real proud to have my name up there with such a great person as Fessler Hare. I've run out of time. I could talk a long time and thank many people. 
but time does not permit. So thank you all, and I will forever be very grateful. Thank you very much. That was certainly a stirring moment. It, uh, gosh, uh, that took me back. And uh, to think about uh, Professor Hare and my family there present, Dr. Phil Pott, and Governor Wallace, Ms. Wallace, and all the people uh, responsible for the renaming of the stadium. I'm highly honored. And of course, uh, to see Bill Newton, David Langner, Lloyd Nix, Pat Sullivan, some uh, fabulous football player, but more than that, great people, and many others. Uh, Gosh, uh, you're so right, Carl, when uh, you can't help but get a little emotional about something like that. Well, Coach Jordan, let me, on behalf of WSFA-TV, thank you for 21 years of the Auburn Football Review, 17 years for South Central Bell, and 13 years for me. I counted it up today, and this is the 133rd time you and I have sat down here on Sunday afternoon to talk about a football game, and I must say I've enjoyed every one of them. Well, and thank now, you. Now let me, on behalf of... Auburn fans all over the state of Alabama and the Southeast, in fact, the nation, uh, thank you for the 25 years of happiness you've given them. You've given them a lot of football games to remember, things they won't forget. 25 years of great Auburn history, and we all just wish you well in retirement. And thank you. Now you're going to go sit up on the 10 yard line if you can get a <laughs> ticket. And, and eat the peanuts if I can get the peanuts. Well, I'll tell you, <clears> you're going to have to work on that, but it's, uh, you've touched many lives, and uh, you know all the football players love you, all the Auburn fans love you, all, all the fans in the state of Alabama love you, and it's been 25 great years, and we do thank you for it. Thank you, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Coach Jordan is making his final appearance here today on Auburn Football Review. At this time, I would again like to turn the program over to Mr. Ben Brown, who has one final special guest he'd like to introduce at this time. And, Coach, we thought it only appropriate that we have your greatest football fan on our final Auburn football review. Well, it's certainly nice after 17 years that I should get to be on Suge's show, and I'm looking forward to getting him up in the stand so he can be on our show for a while. <laughs> I think I can teach him how to act like a fan. He can <laughs> learn to stand up on kickoffs and cheer the team and holler at the coaches like we all do when we're up in the stand. <laughs> But we are real proud of Suge's record at Auburn and feel like that he has done such a good job there. The family is so proud of the fact that the stadium is named for him. We all take great pride in riding by and looking at the thing on the stadium. It's well deserved, I assure you that. Thank you. And now, Coach, on behalf of our 11,000 employees at South Central Bell, we want to present several mementos to you. First of all, we want you to have the film clips of your great moments that you had at Auburn University as a coach. And next, we'd like to present to you uh, a stadium seat built for two. Now, this was specially designed for you and Mrs. Jordan, since we understand that the two of you have never seen a football game together. Now, this may look a little small, but I assure you we had this designed and measured by the size of the seats at Auburn Stadium and that it will fit both of you. We hope you'll enjoy sitting in the stands and looking at the games for a change. Well, thank you very much, Ben, and both Evelyn and I appreciate uh, these beautiful uh, stadium uh, seats. And through you, we would like to uh, thank the uh, South Central Bell organization for thinking about us, remembering us, and we look forward to using them for many years, I hope. We hope so, too. Thank and you. I'm to parch the peanuts, I understand. <laughs> I understand. You can do that. <laughs> you did good. Good. <laughs> The Auburn Football Review. Featuring Coach Ralph Shug Jordan with Carl Stevens was brought to you by South Central Bell.